Hey, you guys. Hopefully this live is coming through clear. I've had some reception issues today, so I'm hoping it's okay. We are gonna be making dinner. This is one of our favorites. I think I've made this at least two other times for class, but it's one of our favorites. And I don't know about what the weather's like where you are, but where I am, it's cold now. <laughs> we went from summer to like one or two weeks of fall to like that's off. So uh, I think it got down to like 11 degrees last night. So just a little cold. And when it gets cold like this, it was like 50 today, which was nice. But then again tonight down to like 20. Um, and so when it gets cold like this, we like our comfort food. So tonight we're going to be making chicken pot pie soup with some biscuits. If you do not have my cookbook yet, the link is down. I think the link's down below. If it's not, I'll get it down below. <laughs> you just click on it, pay, and I ship it right to you. Super, super easy. You can use all forms of credit card, PayPal, etc. to pay. Not a big deal. This is on page 133. And like I said, this is one of our favorites. Um, I've already made the biscuits ahead because part of my baby prep, because we don't have very many more weeks to go, you guys, um, is to fill my freezer with um, homemade English muffins, okay? And I want to do this because this makes an easy biscuits and gravy um, for the morning. Um, also, you can cut these and use them for sandwiches. You can use these for all sorts of things, but also for soups. Um, so now big batches of sourdough English muffins and so I made another really big batch today and uh, these are all for tonight for the soup um, but I did put some into the freezer so these are already made this recipe is also inside my cookbook just in case you don't have it yet there's also um, I was going to say that if sourdough intimidates you but you want to make bread you want to make your own English muffins you want to make um, any sort of uh, bread product but sourdough is intimidating. Please don't give up. Right here in my cookbook, I have um, lots of recipes for things that are called like soaked um, recipes. So you just soak the flour ahead of time. It's super easy. You just go buy store-bought flour and the recipes in this cookbook for the soaked recipes are all adjusted for store-bought flour. The rest of the cookbook is all for fresh ground um, flour, but it does have a conversion in the back. So, um, I just wanted to say that another option, which I don't have a ton of inside my cookbook, is also sprouted um, products. So sprouted breads. In fact, I just looked up this for my dad this last week. He was wanting to get a sourdough and I said, hang on, you can just buy sprouted bread or sprouted flour, I mean, from Azure Standard, buy a cheap bread maker. And if you get online and type in sprouted, um, sprouted bread recipe, there are tons out there that you can just dump it and it can bake it and go. So there are ways to be able to make, make homemade fresh bread that's properly prepared in a bread maker um, while you're at work even. So just keep that in mind. Those are all options um, for everybody. Um, and there's literally no difference between sprouted, sourdough, and soaked. Those three processes are all doing the same thing, which is breaking down the phytic acid within the grain and breaking down the enzyme inhibitors. So it makes it so it's more bioavailable and digestible for your body. So all three of those processes make it happen no matter which one you choose. So there isn't a right or wrong. If your life is super busy, you might wanna pay for sprouted flour and get a bread machine. If you have more time or if you're at home and you can soak your flour ahead of time or make sourdough, great option too. So I just wanna say that because sometimes there's confusion that sourdough is like the ultimate um, and that if you're gonna make a bread, you might as well make it sour or not make anything at all. It's just not true. So I'm going to set these aside. We're going to dip these in the, in the uh, soup. All right. I've also been working on my um, post baby meals. I did have some canning and we can talk about that in just a little bit, but we're going to get started on the soup first. So I'm going to go ahead and tie up a big old stock pot. You guys have seen this before. I use it all the time. I love it. Um, I'm going to go medium heat with my sock pot and I've got a variety of things here on the cutting board. Um, this is fresh, still very, very hot, <laughs> um, broth. I made this today. Um, I cheated. I used an, an instant pot instead of slow cooking it. I didn't have time to slow cook it today. I woke up and my morning was crazy and I just needed to be able to throw a whole frozen chicken inside my instant pot and cook it. 
So our first ingredient is six tablespoons of butter. This is a butter from Azure Standard. I absolutely love it. I buy it by the case and then just freeze them. I'm going to be doubling all the ingredients into this recipe. So I'm going to give you the amounts for serving eight people, but I'm going to be putting more than that in the pot. So please do not get confused. Every time I do this, just know that that means that this recipe is amazing. <laughs> and I know that my family is going to eat a lot of it. So don't uh, be confused as I'm throwing stuff in here. Eight tablespoons of butter. Okay, burner's on. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop up an onion. I've got these gorgeous uh, carrots I got out of my greenhouse. My kids actually pulled them out. We had a solid freeze here. There's actually some more that are in there, but I'm wondering if they're even good anymore because we've gotten such low temperatures. I don't know. Um, they're not as big as these. So that's why they didn't pull them the first time. Um, so I'm not sure on those. <laughs> I don't know how small is small to a kid. I mean, they were like freaking out that these are big. So then does that mean a small is like the size of my pinky? I'm not sure. Anyway, we've got fresh grown uh, garden potatoes. I'm going to use red potatoes tonight. Usually I use yellow potatoes, but tonight we're going to use red. And this is from Azure Standard. This is their gigantic onion. <laughs> so for a normal serving of eight, you're going to need one medium onion this is a gigantic bugger but like i said i am doubling so that's why it's all going to go right into the pot and don't forget to save your scraps for when you make broth it gives it a lot of flavor and what are you going to do with it anyway you're probably just going to throw it away so what i do is i have a gallon sized freezer bag inside the freezer and when I'm making soup and I have, you know, this layer of the onion that like if you chop it, it's just, it never really gets soft when you cook it. And you've got the skin. Now, obviously I wouldn't want to throw this in there because it has a sticker, but everything else can go right into your big pot that you use to make your broth. Same thing with like celery ends, carrot ends. And so I just store that gallon sized freezer bag into the freezer. And as I'm making soups, I just add to it. And once it gets full, we make a nice big batch of broth. And I, I've graduated to putting chicken feet inside my broth. I started that several years ago, which makes it super nutrient dense if you're brave enough. Um, I have not gotten brave enough to do chicken heads yet. <laughs> I was going to do it this year. I really was. <laughs> but I was... Second trimester pregnant and being on my feet for eight hours butchering chickens already was too much. So I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to take these heads and pluck the all the feathers off and do all the prep work for the heads. So I just let them go. The cats enjoyed them and so did the dogs. And on we go. Okay, so more things can go into a broth bag. We've got peelings here for garlic. The next ingredient is garlic cloves, five garlic cloves. Now, a garlic clove, in my opinion, is about the size of your thumbnail, okay? So this one is obviously equal to like two garlic cloves. So just keep that in mind. And this is a clove, this is a bunch of garlic, and then it just breaks down into cloves. You want to try and avoid, if at all possible, I used to depend on it when I first learned how to cook, but you want to avoid the already sliced and diced and minced onion stuff or garlic stuff from the grocery store because if you read the back, and the ingredients that are in there, it's just not a good, not a good thing. And real garlic is actually cheaper. So if you're trying to save money, um, buying the actual raw real garlic is the best way to go. But they had to put preservatives in that so that it doesn't change color while it sits there for who knows how long and waits for you to buy it. So fresh garlic is definitely the way to go. Another benefit to having fresh garlic on hand is it's a tonic for illness. Now the middle of this one's kind of squishy, so I'm going to stop there. I'm going to chop this up and see what we think. Uh, I'm working for five garlic cloves. But I used to I used to do a lot of things, and as you learn and as you grow in your cooking skills, you can change things up and eliminate things that need to be eliminated. But if that jar of garlic is what's standing between you and a home-cooked meal from scratch, then you go buy that jar of garlic. And you use it until you're comfortable cooking and then with the down the road goal of eliminating that. 
We don't all start from scratch. Unless you're raised in a home with a mom who did and taught you that that's the way you do it. Which a lot of people in my age group and younger especially are not blessed with that. Because we have a society that has taken on so much debt that mom can't be at home. And so when mom's not at home, um, there's less time in the kitchen, which means there's less time to cook. And that's just the reality of it. So, you start wherever you can. If that means you have to buy canned garlic, then you buy canned garlic. Your meal will still be more nutritious than going to the dry fruit McDonald's, I can guarantee you. <laughs> Some of the first things that I changed was homemade, I started making homemade cream of chicken and cream of mushroom because I had no idea how to cook. And I knew I bought those things. And so I thought, well, if I could just eliminate that one thing, and it was literally just that one thing. We ate cereal and all sorts of things still. It was full of a lot of junk. But if I thought if I could just eliminate one thing at a time. And so that's how I did it. And I, my journey started like 13 years ago. So give yourself some credit. Every day you make a change, you're walking in the right direction. All right. If you're on Facebook, which I'm not on Facebook a lot, but um, I have been this week a little more than normal. And last week through the weekend. Um, they, there is a Generation Nourished Facebook group. And she's been putting out a lot of recipes with pumpkin in them. And they're actually like really good. She had a um, chicken noodle soup with pumpkin. And at first I was like, ooh, don't know about that. It was actually really good. So you have to go check that out if you are part of Facebook. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick to get some of the onion juice off. We're gonna keep on letting that onion cook. And like I said, hopefully this live is coming through okay. I just kind of had up and down reception, even just using my phone um, today, so. I thought about using the old app I used to use to go live, but um, I know a lot of you guys depend on the notify me button, and that will not work if I do that. So I chose to not do that last second. I'm going to go grab my celery. It's actually in my freezer, so I'll be right back. We're just simmering onions. So I grew a whole bunch of celery this year. This is garden celery. Has quite a bit more leaves than stalks. Um, but I've also been known in the past to buy a whole case of celery and then um, chop it up and then freeze it. Because it makes making soups so fast. So we need three stalks of celery that have been diced. So I'm just going to eyeball it. Because it really doesn't matter, you guys. <laughs> we don't mind celery, so. Okay, I'm going to run this back to the freezer. I'll be right back. So this recipe does call for a thickener. So as soon as the onions are soft, we will go ahead and add some cornstarch, or you could use sprouted flour. All right. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna go ahead and start on the potatoes. Like I said, these are reds. Usually I use um, Yukon Gold because those are my favorite. But you use whatever your favorite is. Purple potatoes would be kind of cool in this. 
I've never gotten those to grow before. But red potatoes grow well here, and so do the Yukon Golds. I don't typically grow um, russets. I just don't care for the flavor of them. But we're just going to simmer that away, and then we're going to add our thickener here. So as far as freezer meals for after baby, I'm actually not technically doing freezer meals with this baby. Um, I'm going to be doing a combination of like prepped freezer bags that are full of like for soups, they'd be uh, full of already chopped vegetables and stuff. Um, but then I have, I'm going to be depending on, oopsie, I threw it in there, hello. Oh um, <laughs> I'll just cook with the onion. But I'm going to be depending on my pantry that's full of canned goods to mix with the stuff from the freezer to make meals. So that is my plan with this baby. And so I've just had to do things like um, fermented beans, um, for things like chili, etc. So that's what I've been busy doing. Um, I also made up some tomato products using Azure Standards tomato powder, which I can show you those in just a little bit here. If you are on watching live and this is coming through clear, would you do me a favor and please comment down below and let me know that I am coming through clear. I'm doing the best I can. It would be nice to know if it was okay. I am just chopping up some potatoes. Woo! And we are making chicken pot pie soup. I'm glad you guys are on tonight with me. It is Halloween. We don't celebrate Halloween in this house. Um, we stopped celebrating it because uh, our oldest daughter was terrified that time of year with all of the people that were dressed up. Um, and so it started out like that and then it just became like, oh, well, we don't actually don't really need the candy and we don't really need the sugar and um, we don't really need people dressed up in some scarier things around the children anyway. And so we just never went back. As a, as a kid, I celebrated. I went around. I still remember one year I went around as, um, <sighs> what was her name? Uh, the mom on the Flintstones. Not Betty. What's the other girl's name? I can't remember. Anyway, I, I, <laughs> my parents had bought me like the whole suit and everything to look like her. It was so much fun. But I also remember that there was snow on the ground. And so I had to like wear, <sighs> what is her name? Wilma or something, right? Anyway, I had to wear that suit over top of my snowsuit. <laughs> so that was a very overweight uh, Wilma, I think was her name. Um, <laughs> I guess I had so much. I was like a marshmallow, you guys. I was lucky that the, the uh, suit even fit over me, to be honest. But I just remember being so cold because it was not unheard of to have snow all the time for um, Halloween. We did have snow, we had some snow this last weekend, but it's all melted at this point. Because like I said, we've had 50 degrees during the day, down to, um, you know, teens at night, but still nice and warm during the day. All right, so we are ready over here because the, the onions are softened in the pan. So, Trying to get you guys as close as possible. <laughs> Gonna grab a whisk and some cornstarch. The recipe calls for a third of a cup of sprouted flour or cornstarch. I'm gonna start with a third and work my way on up because I am doubling this recipe. Go ahead and grab it. Sometimes the amounts for cornstarch can be just a little bit different than sprouted flour. You could also use a cassava flour or something like that. I just so happen to have cornstarch in my cabinet still from making homemade um, apple pie filling, which is also inside my recipe book um, in the back. And that calls for cornstarch as a thickener, and then we can it. Okay, so we're gonna let that cook for a minute. And I'm going to add some broth, and then we're going to start cooking it up here. I 
I made this soup before we left for our trip, um, but I made it super thick with not as much broth. And my family just loved it. Oh my gosh, I just love this. And I thought, oh, well, good. We will we'll make sure we make it more often. So the recipe calls for four cups of chicken broth. But like I said, not to confuse you, but I'm doubling everything because my family is going to devour this. So if I'm going to go through the pain of cooking, it might as well be large enough to feed us at least for one night, if not two. <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and start adding these potatoes. I'm going to get out my bench scraper because that makes it a lot easier. I love these. I got it for making sourdough and um, homemade rolls and stuff to scrape it up off your counter. But it does sure work well to scrape other things off your counter. Like freshly chopped vegetables. <laughs> and I'm going to try and get William over tonight because I know he has not made it in several weeks for the uh, regular milk drinking at night. <laughs> and the floors are finally done. It took so many coats of oil, you guys. It wasn't even funny. Um, one spot in particular, I think we're on coat number six of oil. But I can say it's finally done because it's not really absorbing any more oil. So if you guys missed that, I talked about it last week. It's a tongue oil. It's spelled T-U-N-G. Um, and I use that on all my countertops, my concrete floors, etc., to seal those surfaces without it being toxic. And I buy that from Real RealMilkPaint.com. Not an affiliate. Don't make any money for recommending that. However, if you are in the market to purchase things like liver powder, uh, emu oil, cod liver oil, etc., I do have links down below, or I will at least. I'm not sure if I got the links up underneath this video or not. Um, but I will get them up. Um, they'll be down in the description box below um, for places to buy that that I am an affiliate with. So I don't make any money on my YouTube channel at all. And um, that's just a small compensation. So if you already have to buy it, if you use my links, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so the next ingredient, we had uh, four large potatoes. Now we're going to go on with carrots. And like I told you before, we've got garden carrots, so they are all different sizes. This is just, it's okay. So for the carrots, the amount is supposed to be three medium carrots. I'm supposed to be doubling that, but I've got like fat ones that are short. Like which one's a medium? I don't know. Um, so we're just going to chop them all up and throw them on in. <laughs> There's something about garden fresh carrots. They just bring so much flavor to a soup. It was funny because um, last week, I, oh, you can save these two. Save these two for your broth. Into the broth pile they go. Last week I was, I made a soup. And the kids were like, oh, are these carrots from our garden? And if you live in a climate where it freezes, if you can wait to harvest your carrots until after a freeze, they're even sweeter. Hey, Jackie. Hey, Julie. <laughs> it's been a while since you've been able to catch a live. Do you guys have snow over there, Julie? All of ours melted. It's still cold, but we had 50 today. But definitely, um, definitely cold. We are bringing out the comfort foods. But we only had like half an inch. But I imagine you might have gotten more, Julie, than over here. I did have an Azure haul for you guys video. And I recorded it late at night. Oh, just windy. Huh. I wonder where the snow came from then. That's interesting. I, mean, I think it came from the south, which was kind of weird in general. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I had an Azure Standard video for you guys for my last month's Azure delivery. And that truck came in late at night. I didn't get home until like 9 o'clock. And so I was already so tired. And I recorded the video. And either A, I didn't save it on my phone. Or B... It never recorded it. I'm not really sure which one. But anyway, I woke up the next morning, went to go edit it, and was going to upload it when the kids and I went to the library. Because it only takes like five minutes to upload a 30-minute video over there. Um, so they have Wi-Fi and I don't. But um, in any event, I went to go upload it, or went to go edit it, and it wasn't there. <laughs> and I thought, 
there is no way I'm going to haul out nine hundred dollars uh, worth of <laughs> Azure product to make a video. <laughs> uh, so no Azure haul video for you guys this month. But the good news is next week is already another one. So I'm going to make sure it's recording. I'm going to make sure it saves before I put all the food away. And I will get that video out next week. Somebody had commented. I think it was Jackie, if I remember right. Jackie says, we are supposed to get down to 31. Oh my gosh, that's cold for you guys, isn't it? That's not normal, is it, to get fr frozen down there? Because you're in Georgia, right? With Kathy, right? You're down south. I don't think that's normal. Up here, it's normal for our boogers to freeze. I don't think it's normal down there. <laughs> The girls came in from their chores. It was 11 degrees this morning and so windy. So it's probably below zero. And <laughs> Grayson came in and she said, Mom, my boogers are frozen. <laughs> I was like, yep, that's normal. <laughs> Welcome to winter. <laughs> Just make sure you thaw out your nose in front of the wood stove with Kleenex, okay? <laughs> it is normal though up here. But I'm thinking not so normal down south. Yeah. So, winter's definitely here. We are trying to get the greenhouse set up because sometime between now and baby, um, we're going to have to move the animals in. Steve said single digits, or Steve, that's Julie. She had said single digits here the last couple of, oh, nights with wind. Yeah, brr. So, it's technically below zero then, Julie, right? It's colder than it is here. I guess I should count my blessings. But we need to finish getting our greenhouse ready because we use it like an ark for our animals in the winter. And I bring all the chickens in so we don't have any frozen eggs or frozen waters. Um, the geese stay out. The geese actually like the snow and the wind and the bitter cold, which is, I don't know, something must not be right in their heads. But in any event, um, I'm going to go ahead and increase the temperature over here up to high. So we're going to try and go for a boil here. Um, so they stay outside, but the, the uh, chickens all come in. And um, who else comes in? Oh, the goats come in when they go to have their babies. All right, we need two cups of milk. Let's see, I'm doubling, so we're going to do four. If you're using the sprouted flour though, please make sure you follow the recipe in the in the recipe book on page 133 and go ahead and use a, a third of a cup. Um, because I'm using cornstarch, I have the ability to thicken this in a little bit if it's too thin. So I need four cups, don't I? Which is what's was in here. Okay, two cups of milk for one one uh, one batch. Like I said, I'm doubling this baby. <laughs> Uh, it's one of the things that I learned to do was to make sure I double all of my stuff because my family's going to have to eat tomorrow and especially if there's winter storms coming I tend to make several soups because they're really easy to warm up on top of a wood stove if you have to if you lose power okay so now to this we need to add oregano half of a teaspoon I'm just going to eyeball, but if you are uncomfortable with pouring it into your hand, you sure could um, get out your spoons. <clears throat> Half of a teaspoon of basil. And we got rosemary and a quarter of a teaspoon. <clears throat> my amounts are bigger in my hand because I'm doubling. I will say today we had um, grilled cheese sandwiches with... Um, that canned tomato soup, um, I believe, I don't think I did a video on that, maybe I did, or I made a community post with that recipe, so good, <laughs> so good, pulling it off the shelf today. Okay, one teaspoon of healthy salt, so you want a colored salt, pink Himalayan, Celtic sea salt, that's gray, or the real salt brand is really good, Azure Standard also sells their own brand, which is what's in this shaker here, you just want the color because that is your minerals that help your body to be able to handle the salt without causing health issues. Salt that is white has just been, all that stuff's been taken out. And you're still buying it, still paying for it. 
Okay, one more ingredient into here is our frozen veggies. So I buy these from Azure Standard. Another option would be to chop up more carrots and then just, you know, put garden fresh green peas and um, corn separately, all the ingredients separate. But I like doing it like this because it's easier. <laughs> so three cups of frozen mixed vegetables. So I got doubling over here. I've got growing kids that will come over and have at least two bowls of the soup tonight and ask for thirds. So I've got to make a big pot. I've actually considered getting even a larger pot so that I could make even more soup all at once. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but I love cooking, I do, but I don't like always having to cook. I would rather have some leftovers that we can eat tomorrow for lunch, so I don't have to worry about that, that meal in particular. Okay, so this is going to boil, and I can already tell this is a little bit thin, so once it comes up to more of a simmer, I'm going to add some more of the cornstarch. I'm going to go put this into the freezer. We still have to add chicken, I'll add that last, I'll be right back. And we're going to talk about what I've been canning for baby. Alright. And maybe I'll go with William too for his milk. That'd be fun. <laughs> Alright. So, for baby. I might just take you guys into the... I don't know how dirty it is in here. I don't know what my reception is going to do. So maybe I won't take you in there. But this is my food pantry. And you guys can see right there, there's like some green labels. Um, those are the rows of food that are for my meals after baby. So things like black bean salsa that would be added to a recipe. Um, there's canned beans along that shelf. Um, uh, tomato sauce. So what I did this week was I took, let me get out of your standards. Do I have it now still? I did. I took... As your standards, tomato powder, which the price went up on, so I haven't done the calculations yet, but I'm sure it's still cheaper than buying canned products because it was way cheaper um, before. So anyway, they sell organic tomato powder, and now they ship it in Mylar bags, which I love um, versus this plastic. This one was one of the older ones I purchased. But basically, all you do is add water to this stuff, you guys. It makes it so easy to make Tomato sauce, tomato paste. I canned up little cute jars. Let me go grab them. Of tomato paste. Because one of the recipes that I'm making is calling for six tablespoons of tomato paste. So I just made it and canned it in these little tiny jars. Which I only have these jars because I use them for baby food. Um, when the baby starts eating food. And I need to go out places. I have like some stuff in this that I can use. Um, but they're empty right now because there's no baby that's going to be eating food anytime soon. And so I thought, well, those will hold six tablespoons of tomato paste. Um, but just for an example, so tomato paste with a tomato powder says right on the back that for paste you do two to three parts of water to one part powder. I found that mine, the consistency I like for tomato paste was more like two parts of the, the powder to one of the, oh, sorry, two parts water to one part flour or water cheese two parts water to one part powder got it finally anyway so i made tomato paste i also made some quarts of um, tomato sauce and the cool thing is you don't have to have a pressure canner to can this you guys tomato products you can safely boil in a water bath canner so anybody who has a big pot and some water and some jars could totally make this for themselves as a convenience type meal. The last thing I made, which I'm gonna grab, is, I'm calling it meatloaf sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make up meatloaf raw with all the ingredients and then all my family has to do is take it out of the freezer, let it thaw and put it in a pan and then dump this stuff on the top. So yes, it's supposed to be a little bit watery it did kind of separate too. I tend to not want to shake my jars once I get them canned because I don't want to break my seal by chance. Um, so there's a little bit of liquid on the top, but the bottom's more solid. 
So it's going to be a thick sauce they can just dump on top of the meatloaf and then bake it. Um, I was just thinking of how I can make it easier for my family. So it's just like a one or two step process to make meals. And that's definitely one way to do it, especially with meatloaf. I'm trying to think of what else I did. Um, a lot of canning of beans, fermented beans. Um, I do have a video that will be coming um, because in this Azure order, I have um, organic mushrooms coming. I'm going to be making a homemade cream of mushroom soup, and I'm going to make sure that that records, even if I have to make it twice, because <laughs> my last stuff was cruddy on recording, and I lost part of the footage, because um, I made homemade cream of chicken and canned it. This time I'll be homemade cream of mushroom, and we're going to can it. Um, one of the recipes post-baby is um, chicken and rice. It's like a casserole. It's also inside my cookbook. Um, <clears throat> basically I took a lot of the recipes that I grew up with as a kid that had processed ingredients and turned them into from scratch recipes and that's what my cookbook is. Um, so anyway, I needed to make some cream of mushroom to go with the cream of chicken. So that will be coming out as well in the next couple of weeks. Um, I made a list of everything I need to get done before this baby gets here so I can be more focused. <laughs> And people have offered to help me, and so I want to take as much help as people want to give to get ready for baby. Because it's coming a lot faster than what I even want to talk about. So, <laughs> um, anyway, and when the baby is born, there will be an announcement on the community section of the YouTube channel. So, if you are not familiar with how that works, when you type in Abundantly Blessed Homestead and you click on the channel, there's all these, like, little words on the top. There's, like, shorts, video, live. If you scroll to the right hand side, there's a little community tab and all you do is click on community and all of my posts, it's sort of like Facebook there, um, are right there. So that's where I will post once baby gets here. So you guys will all know where I am and what's happening. <laughs> so it's not like I all of a sudden just disappear. Oh, Julie, your daughter is due in two weeks. Oh, that's so cool. Does she know she's having a boy or girl or is she keeping it a secret? Um... So anyway, that's how I've been preparing for this baby, is I've just been canning things up individually and selecting recipes they can just kind of dump. Like chili, you go into my pantry, you could grab canned uh, kidney beans and pinto beans and tomato sauce and that sort of thing and then just dump it. So that's what I've been working on. It's been kind of crazy and wild. Trying to think what else. That's how I'm handling it. Usually I, I fill a whole freezer full of freezer meals um, for after baby but I don't have the freezer space this year oh a girl oh I bet your grandma's excited aren't you <laughs> two girls and two boys hey that's cool to have it even we had all four girls and then William and then of course Benjamin so I'm not sure what this is a surprise and I wanted to find out because we don't have any baby stuff um, and so I wanted to find out so I could go buy baby stuff. And my husband said, no, 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 no. We haven't found out with any of the others. We can get gender neutral baby stuff. And then once the baby's born, we can flood it with pink or blue or whatever. Okay. So this is just coming to a boil. I'm going to go ahead and add the other two thirds of a cup of cornstarch. Two weeks. That's going to go really fast. It's going to be like before Thanksgiving. I'm supposed to be after Thanksgiving. See if that happens. <laughs> For my midwife's sake, I hope it does because she has a lot of births right around mine. <laughs> so once again, I can do this because this is cornstarch and you can add it to liquid without a problem. Another option that would be super good in this would be to thicken this with either cooked and fermented and parade white beans or um, you could thicken it with uh, cream cheese. That would be a good option as well. We just need it slightly thickened. We're not looking for a super thick soup. But there's just something about a thickened soup on a cold day. Her first was a girl, so it is like starting over again with the two boys in between. Oh, that's sweet. <clears throat> you could totally add to this um, your chicken if it's raw. For me, my chicken is cooked because I made the broth earlier. Oh, thank you, Julie. She says, I'm excited for you, we'll be praying. That is so nice. Yeah, I have my whole, I go to a Bible study 
And um, shout out to Lynn if you end up watching the replay or if you're here live. Um, anyway, she invited me to a local Bible study, and so I've been going to the Bible study. And they're all praying as well. Um, smooth delivery. Thoughts for a nice smooth delivery. Um, everything looks fine now, so that's good. Um, anyway, as I was saying, is if you're using raw chicken, you could add it right now and it could be boiled with the soup. But since mine is cooked, I'm going to wait till last because if you add it right now, this chicken's going to get tossed around so much it's just going to be in like little tiny shreds. And I grew up with canned soup as a kid where there's like three shreds of chicken in your whole bowl. <laughs> and I'd rather have chunks. So we're going to wait to add the soup until this is done. So this is going to boil, simmer slash boil, I turned my page, hang on, for 20 minutes or until the vegetables are soft. So it doesn't take very long. We have all of our ingredients added. Let me go see if William wants some milk. I'll be right back. William! 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 Oh, you're watching a movie with a mermaid? Okay. So why don't you come on over here and mommy will get the milk, okay? It's making me fall over. It's making you do what? It's making me fall over. Fog over? What does fog over mean? Okay, this is hot. Mama's got cornstarch all over her. This is hot, so don't touch it, okay? I did reduce the heat over here down to medium because we're at a boil now. Okay. Let me, oh, you're going to eat the chicken? Okay, how about we wait for, for the milk? Let's do the milk. Did you have a good day today, William? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to put it up. I can see your face. Oh, there he is. There's that, William. Oh, you're so cute. Which cup should we do? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no. Which one? You want one of these? Mm -hmm. One of the big ones? Okay, hang on. Do you want blue or gray? Blue? Okay. So, I did have someone ask why I use plastic. Um, <laughs> in my, in my kitchen. So I use plastic because I have not found something else I'm happy with, with concrete floors. We do not put anything hot in these, um, because I don't want the chemicals to leach out of the plastic. But I have concrete floors all over my house, and if I, I tried, I moved out here with glass everything, and, um, yeah. <laughs> that lasted like... A week. Hey, 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 hey. What's up with that? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> In any event, my, my cups and stuff lasted like a week. And so I thought, I can't keep doing this. There's so much glass everywhere. Nothing's living through these concrete floors. And I love my concrete floors. I do. Um, but I had to get some sanity. So this is what I've settled on. So if anyone knows of anything else that would be good um, in this instant, let me know. Um, I've tried um, enamel coated steel plates and cups. But the problem is once they're dropped on the concrete, the enamel coating cracks and then it rusts. And the enamel coating comes off on your food. So. I've tried those. So if you have another suggestion at all, please feel free to put it down below in the comments, even if you're catching the replay. Jackie says, I like the fire truck on your shirt. Fire trucks were my son's favorite thing. We used to visit the local fire stations in our area when he was young. She likes your truck on your dirty shirt. What have you been doing that made you so dirty today? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either, but you look like you've been cooking or something. Hmm? You don't know. You know what happened. You're just dirty. <laughs> so, I have had questions about my concrete floors and my knees and whether or not my 
Body hurts after standing on the floors all day. And what I have to say for that is that um, if you're barefoot, you will not have pain from being on concrete. Julia says, I have stainless steel drinking cups. Brand is, oh, I need to write this down. Hang on. Where did you get them, Julia? Is it like an Amazon thing? I'm going to write this down. Um, B O R O U X. Um, anyway, what I was saying when it comes to. You're a charmer, William. Yes, he is. <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> Ladies, look out. <laughs> right? About 12 years. Oh, boy. We're in trouble, aren't we? Oh, you drink. Are you going to drink the rest? Oh. So when it comes to concrete floors, um, the only reason why your joints are hurting when you are standing on concrete, if you work and you're wearing shoes, <coughs> is because that concrete either A, has a barrier... And it that's, that's preventing people from earthing or grounding, which our home does not have. And or you're wearing shoes that are preventing your body from grounding and earthing and releasing those. You okay? Ooh, releasing the positive ions. Okay, what do we say? What do we say? Excuse you, yeah. Um, and so, because I, we designed our own home and we poured the concrete and there's no barrier on the concrete, you can earth and ground in our home. And so because of that, as long as I am barefoot, um, my joints and stuff do not hurt. Now, if I spend a whole day in shoes in here, oh, absolutely. Um, but that is why um, joints start to hurt. It's also why our athletes... They used to play on real turf and now are playing on artificial turf or having much more joint injuries because their bodies are not able to, um, you know, discharge in a sense. Okay. That sure is cooking along. So anyway, I love my concrete floors. I think they're dirty right now, but you guys can look. I oil them and so they're that deep, dark gray color. <laughs> You're goofy, William. <laughs> you like that chicken, though, don't you? <laughs> it's almost time to eat. You know what I made to go with the soup? I made those those biscuits. Mmm. Mm. <laughs> ah, you're so cute. I do have a video up here on how to make English muffins, sourdough English muffins, and my cookbook. If you haven't grabbed it yet, does have. Oh, don't do that. Why? Because you know what Abby says. If you do that, you have to, have to take more myrrh. Yeah, bad habit. In any event, um, my cookbook has soaked recipes, sourdough recipes, and um, sprouted recipes. You're going to eat that? Okay. Do you want to eat it? You have to eat the whole thing. And you kill it. Yeah, you just smell it. It's a fresh carrot, so it tastes a little bit different than the store. <laughs> No, you don't want you don't want to eat it. You do? Okay. Ooh, you got carrot in my milk. Look. <laughs> like a little carrot hair fell into my milk. I'm not even joking. I don't know if I can even get that on camera, but Okay. I'll just pretend it's a smoothie. <laughs> You're a good kid, William. Oh, you want the hairs off now? Do you want them in my milk? The hairs won't hurt you. It's just like little roots because a carrot is a root. So it was growing and that's how it got its water. You see those little tiny hairs? Okay. Okay, well maybe you shouldn't eat it then because it came right out of the garden. It's not like the ones in the store, they take all those little hairs off. Can you believe it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the ones in the store are wax carrots. <laughs> hey, hey, don't make a big mess. Chew it nicely. I would hate for you to choke. That would be very sad. Okay, so the vegetables are almost done. And then we're going to add our chicken and then we're going to be ready to eat. Okay, so this is also, they take this off in the store. Let's talk about it. 
This is the end of the carrot where it has that pretty green stuff that grows up. So this is in the dirt, like this. And then the top has green leaves that grow up. And it says, hello, William, I'm a carrot. You can't see me, but I'm growing under the ground. That's what it does. Mm. So then, when we pull it out of the ground, we're like, oh, there's a carrot. So then, we don't need this anymore. Because the carrot's not going to grow anymore. It's done growing because we pulled it out. And it's time to eat. Hey. It's fulfilling its life purpose of feeding you. Hey, hi. Teach me how to... Wait, wait. Mm. Can I teach me how to pull them out, okay? Oh, teach you how to pull carrots out of the ground? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fun. Do you remember how to get potatoes out of the ground? Uh -uh. You don't remember? You helped this year, didn't you? To take the potatoes? Make sure you take good bites so you don't choke. But I'll show you. I have some carrots out to the greenhouse still, and they have the green on them, and Mommy will show you what they look like. How about that? How, how do we put them out? Pull them out? Uh -huh. Oh, you just, you'll see, there's like a little bit like this on the, and you just grab onto it and go, whoosh. It comes right out. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because we grow vegetables here to be our food. And so that, that carrot started with in a tiny little seed in the soil. And then mommy watered it and the sun came and it grew a carrot. And that carrot said, I'm so happy I'm being grown to nourish this family. And so it's like, you know, one day you're going to have your dream job and everything. And you're going to be loving your life and what you do for a career. And it's just like that. This carrot had a career of growing and being our food. <laughs> Deep questions when it comes to the carrot. <laughs> okay, be careful eating. Don't go goof off. I gotta stir the soup, okay, so it doesn't burn. Stand right there, don't fall. Okay. We're gonna stir it. It's almost done. It's nice and thick. Look at that yummy soup. Mm. Do you see it? Mm. It's almost done. Mm. Don't fall in though. Mm. Why? I will say one game changer for me for this pregnancy has been taking magnesium. Um, usually by now I am not doing well and in bed. No, no, don't pull on me, please. I already have you know what I have in here? I have a baby in here. And it's already pulling on me. Why? <laughs> Why? Because it's stretching me out. I've got all these muscles and it's going <laughs> stretching me. <laughs> That'll be a deep subject. Anyway, magnesium has really, really helped me with this pregnancy. I'm able to walk and function and take it easy, but also do the things that need to be done and still be able to walk. So if you are having pelvic pain and you are pregnant, girl, get yourself some good magnesium. Makes a big difference. And I wish my my last midwife would have told me about. Maybe I should try some. Because uh, I could have been like walking. Because when I was pregnant with William, by now I couldn't even walk to the bathroom. So. What are you doing? You're being silly. <laughs> so I'm not sure what um, like Thanksgiving... Last year I did that huge live. Definitely not going to do that this year. So I'm not exactly sure what all it looks like. And I'm still formulating in my mind what stop, what videos and stuff are going to be like after baby. So I'm, I just started thinking about that today. So I will let you guys know when I decide what we're going to be doing. Um, I do have big helpers. So that's a good thing. But of course, for the first 30 days after baby, we won't really be cooking. Because we're going to have... Uh, meals from friends and family and meals from the pantry. So we'll have to videotape something else like a cute boy eating a carrot or something. Small bites. <laughs> is that carrot good? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So much more flavor, isn't it? Chill out. Chill out. Hey, Gracie, how are you? Good. We just got the food because we had the meal. Okay.
Yeah, it is time to milk, isn't it? That's fine. All right, so this is, I think, done. I'm going to test a carrot. Okay, look out, buddy. Okay. I'm going to pull, pull the drop in front of you. Well, this is like boiling hot, so I'm going to say no for now. Oh, yes, this stuff is done. Okay, so vegetables are soft, you guys. So we're going to add, add our last ingredient, and this meal is done. Turn the heat off. The last ingredient is four cups of cooked chicken. I have way more than that because I'm doubling. So it's going to go into our soup. There it goes. Chicken has some yummy soup with it in it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the people see how nice and creamy this is. Oh, so good. We're going to stir it good first. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's delicious. With some biscuits? Oh, yes. Okay, so I'm going to move them on over. Hey, it has some hair in it. There's no hair. That's chicken. Yeah. I'm right on that. Okay, Mommy's going to move. Yeah. This might be a, that's a bone. Chicken bones. Quality controls here. Good eye, William. All right, so this soup is finished. I'm going to bring you guys in for a close-up, hopefully not fog you out. But it is nice and thick and creamy I and it's going to be delicious with some biscuits. I didn't. Um, <laughs> get me. All right. So that is all there is to dinner tonight. I'm so glad you guys showed up. Aren't you glad they showed up with Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, depending on my Azure order, will depend on if we have a class next week or not. So, just stay tuned. Keep your eye on the channel as far as pre-scheduled events go. And I'll let you guys know. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> you and your crunchy.